and automation, it was like improving, 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 right. you know? So something that we do very good is that we... You're listening to Caffeinated with host Nathan Resnick, the show where we help companies level up their customer service to turn this expense into a profit center so you can increase revenue and drive customer happiness. Hey, welcome back to Caffeinated. My name is Nathan Resnick, your host. Today we have Cynthia from Vexy coming on. Cynthia, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Nathan. So I want to start, first question we always ask is, what kind of coffee do you drink? I have a very sad story because I used to drink Chiapaneco coffee or from Oaxaca, which is a very traditional coffee and very good. Mm -hmm. But now I can't drink coffee anymore and I just drink decaf. Oh, wow. All right. Well, we've got decaf on. There you go. That's good. So before we dive in, tell me your 30 second backstory. How did you you know, get to be involved with Vexi and tell me more about yourself and and your career. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'm co-founder and COO at Vexi. And I think my story starts when I was born and I was raised by a single, single mom, you know? Mm. So while growing up, she had to, like, she was a 20 year old. She had to work, study and parent at the same time. So something that I saw when I was growing is that she had to borrow money or to go to finance herself with like outrageous microcredits with high interest rates and to to resell things, you know. Mm. So I always remember seeing my mother trapped in this interest rate, horrible cycle in, in which she was always in debt. And that's the way that I was raised and that she really, really was a hard worker. And through that way, I was, I, I was able to study later in private schools in Mexico. And I mm-hmm. also had to work, study and have scholarships. And when I made my life through professional, through, through my professional path, I realized that I was very good at growing companies, you know? So I started mm-hmm. my careers in Mars, Mexico, and then I got the offer to bring to Mexico an American company called um, the Warranty Group. So that was my first experience uh, with entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And at that point, one of my friends, which is my my co-founder now, came to me and talked to me about Bexy and about how he had this idea of bringing access to credit to all Mm -hmm. the the population in Mexico that doesn't have access to it. And it immediately makes sense with my life and with my Mm -hmm. my story. So I realized that I'd had to come and and found Bexy with him and to do something to change people's life. And I'm totally sure that if my mom had Bexy at that time, her life would have been different. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to touch real quick because I'm so interested. What is it like to bring, you know, a company into Mexico, the warranty group, right? What does that look like when they're trying to launch and grow in Mexico? What was that, you know, experience like in a nutshell? Um, I think compared because it was a very well established company worldwide, you know, and they were only starting operations in Mexico. So compared to to doing Bexin, for example, where we didn't have nothing, it was pretty easy because there were some processes. We have a legal and underwriting department back here in, in the United States. So uh, I think the main task for me was to find the first new customers, mm. to build the team, to set or to tropicalize some processes to the Mexican market. But it was I think it was easier because there was already something done. Right. You know? Right. Makes a lot of sense. So now diving into Vexi, how do you structure your support team? What what does that look like? Well, uh, at the beginning, the support team was me and my founders, Mm -hmm. you know, so it was just us, a cell phone and a line we we, uh, got to, to attend our customers. So as we started growing, of course, we started to specialize to have uh, to get people with more experience in customer service. Uh, we started automating some processes. 
we started um, acquiring some tools because everything was very manual at the beginning. Mm. And then something that I believe was a very big milestone in our process is once we have a team, the tools we needed and automation, it was like improving, 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 right. you know? So something that we do very good is that we separate the kind of services that the customer requires and we specialize the team so they can provide a more efficient and faster answer. Because basically when somebody that is using a credit card calls their support team is because they're in trouble mm -hmm. and you want to do it as fast as possible because they might be on the line of their supermarkets trying to pay, you know? Right, right. It makes a lot of sense. When it comes to metrics in your support team, what do you look at? What are the kind of the main metrics that you track typically? Yeah, something very important because when I was when I worked for the warranty group, something really important was how fast the call was, mm. you know? And here for Bexy is very different because we know that our customers are having their first experience with a credit card. Mm. So we are not measuring the length of the call, but the time uh to total resolution, you know? Mm. So we measure volume, the share per contact channel, the share per day of the week per hour, because we right. want to know when we need to attend more customers or, or when we need more resources. Uh, of course, the time to first response is very important because 80% of, of our interactions are through um, chat. Mm. So you don't want to chat a company and be there waiting forever, you know? Right. Right. So that's very important. And of course, the customer satisfaction and the percentage of, of uh, questions we have of different topics so that we know how to improve our customer experience. Because when we have something that is very recurrent in customer service is because we have something to do with the, with the experience in general. Right. Makes a lot of sense. Do you work with your own in-house support team or is that something you outsource? What does that look like? We have our own in-house team and we, we feel very, very proud about that because they actually make part of how the, how the product evolves because mm. we get a lot of feedback from customer success. It was customer, customer uh, service at the beginning. Now we evolve it to customer success. So uh, the product team and the marketing team are always talking with them to see what we can improve and how we can serve them better. Makes a lot of sense. I'm curious too, you mentioned, you know, tracking all these metrics, what kind of tools or software do you use to, to track those metrics? Uh, we use Sendesk, which is very good for us mm -hmm. at this stage. And we are also integrating HubSpot for a better CRM experience. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. So that's kind of like the key software you use. Have you have any? Have you had any kind of horror stories when it comes to support that come to mind, or any superhero stories where someone went, you know, above and beyond for Vexi? I'd, I'd love to hear. Well, horror stories. We we have only four years in the market, so mm. we are pretty pretty young. So we had a lot of, of horror stories. One is, uh, I remember that we launched a new product in November and the, the, the service like skyrocketed, you know, like the mm. questions that, that the customer had. Right. So uh, we were, we couldn't attend all of them. So the time to first response was crazy. Like all the founders were working in customer success again. Uh, like we have, people from all the areas working in customer success. So I think I think it was a horror story because of the time to fear response wasn't the one that we liked it, but also it showed how committed all the company was into serving the customer first, you know? So I remember that it was a couple of weeks until we can hire more, more agents. And I think that we took the decision to say, we're gonna stop everything else because we want to serve our customers well first. And when we have that done, mm -hmm. then we can continue growing and doing our thing, you know? Yeah. So, That's amazing. I mean, yeah. it really goes to show, you know, when you launch a new product and there's either a ton of demand or a lot of questions around the product, support gets overwhelmed and it's so important to see that the founders are willing to st step in and, you know, answer those key questions. Uh, another kind of, 
theme that we always talk about on Caffeinated is the convergence right now of AI and support. And I'm curious, you know, what are your thoughts about AI? Are you using it at Vexi right now? You know, how do you think AI fits into the whole support ecosystem at your at your company? I think that if it's cautiously implemented, it will definitely boost your efficiency and it will also boost the experience of your customer because they will find an answer faster than what a human can do, mm -hmm. you know? But this is a very small line because I think we all have been in this experience in which you, you say like, I want to talk to a human. You right. are not addressing what I want to solve, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think definitely companies can uh, improve their safe service through AI, be more efficient, but there's a lot to work, a, a lot of work to do to get the experience that, that we want for our customers. Totally. That makes a lot of sense. And I'm curious when and, and if does Vexi right now have a phone channel? And if not, when do you think phone as a support channel is a valid channel to have for, as a business? Uh, we do have a phone channel, but I was, as I was saying, uh, we have a high consultancy rate on chat mm -hmm. and that's because our customers are very young and like, even I'm not that young now, but even I, I prefer like just to chat and then I will do something else and right. we like to multitask, you know, mm -hmm. but the phone thing, I, I think it has to do with the segment you are serving. Maybe if they are more old, they will prefer phone than chat. It depends on the level of, of difficulty of using the product, because maybe a chat won't be that easy to transmit what you want. And mm -hmm. I think that definitely when you have a customer that is really upset, you want to do phone first because right. the chat can't transmit your, your voice and what like your objectives, you know, mm -hmm. it's very hard and definitely we choose to use the phone in that totally. circumstances. Makes sense. That's a good analysis of when to use phone support. How many tickets on average does a support rep on your team answer per month or handle per month? Do you track that and, and you know, how many do you think they should be able to handle? Yeah, we do. Uh, but I think, let me give you the, I don't have the exact, I think it's like 6,000. Okay. But I will yeah, give it to you. 6, yeah. But I think that rate changes with the channel you use. For totally. example, if we are doing chat, you can attend many tickets at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you are doing phone calls, just one customer per right. time. Right. Of course. Uh, it also depends on the maturity of your segment. Because, for example, we notice that now the customers are self-serving with the bot we have instead mm -hmm. of going to talk to to an agent because they already search for certain things you know oh that's cool how did you set up uh, the bot that you use uh i think that as many things that we've done it was a matter of trial and error you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we started using the tool that uh, actually send this has and we started with a very basic bot so we just said like, Hey, how are you? And we gave the customer a few subjects to, to read mm -hmm. and like you go step by step and start searching why the, when the customer likes to chat with the bot mm -hmm. and when they are definitely not into it. Right. So, um, I think it wasn't a project project that just started, started and we left it is something that we have to continue improving. Adapt, yeah, makes sense. So one of our favorite questions here at Caffeinated is, what is one question that we didn't ask you that you want to answer? And then so you can you know come up with a question yourself and then answer it yourself. So I'm excited to hear uh, what you have for our audience. Yeah, I think that you haven't asked me if we have a good customer service. Oh, okay, that's a great so... question. Uh, and I think that we do. And I think that what makes us different is because we care that our customers really get the best experience with us because we want them to love us. And I think that there is no bank in the world that thinks, oh, I want my customers to love me, you mm -hmm. know? So we want them to feel 
that we are not judging because they don't know some uh, aspects based on on how to use their credit cards. Mm -hmm. We want them to feel that we are a companion on this journey that they are doing. And I think that reflects in the good rates that our customers are giving to us. And like 50% of our new customers come from referrals. So that speaks very well for, for this. That's amazing. That's that's a great, great question and amazing answer. So fast three, as we wrap up here, number one, what is your favorite book? Uh, from James Clear, Atomic Habits. Oh, nice. That's a great yeah, one. It number was two, super good. Yeah. Number two, favorite blog, if you have one. Yes, Magma's blog, which is our investor. And they also have Crossing Border podcast, which is amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I like Crossing Border a lot. That is a great podcast. And last but not least, a favorite industry leader that you've been following? Uh, I think it's Amazon. I'm not okay. sure if 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 they, they have a lot of controversy, yeah. but in how they at, they serve their customers, they are great. I think it that's is. a benchmark for us. It is amazing. I mean, Amazon has some of the best customer service in the world. It's just mm -hmm. incredible to see what they do, especially at their scale. Well, Cynthia, thank you so much for joining Caffeinated. Where can our audience get in touch with you or, you know, read about your, your work online? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye for now.